Check, check. I don't think I am. I am on. Am I not on back there? You're not coming back. Alright, I'll go check. Did you turn me on? tonight so uh, youth uh, don't be uh, don't come out tonight because it'll just be cold and dark here uh, so uh, we will uh, if you'll be back I don't know if uh, I have to talk to Corey and Mel to see if it's next week but uh, uh, we'll be back shortly um, prayer meeting tomorrow morning we're going to be doing that till the next week um, uh, we have uh, some things going on at the house tomorrow so uh, if you're planning on coming out for that make sure uh, you don't it's next uh, Monday morning um, also, Wednesday night supper and study uh, will be returning on January 4th. Right? Uh, also, uh, we will be starting a, uh, a toy drive for the children in Romania in January here. You can bring in any toys uh, that uh, you would like to send to the, the gardens and the nurseries in Romania. Um, and we have an announcement in your bulletin about a baby and child dedication service coming up January 15th. And snow camp signups are starting. So, uh, <clears throat> how's everyone's morning? It's been hot. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Drop the steps so you don't fall on that. <laughs> I'll go up the other side. Okay. Next time. All right. All right. On behalf of Weatherwood Church and all that we have encountered this past year and on these past whatever many, 16 years. 17. 17. Please count. <laughs> well, thank you. For you and the family. Thank and you very much. much. All right. Thank you, Sue. You're welcome. All right. Uh, we're going to get ready to open with a, a time of, of worship, uh, and uh, we have a video to prepare us for that. So far away. So distant. So weary. Isolated. Divided, tired, months of waiting, months of longing.
Yes, Donovan. Good day. It's Jesus' birthday. That's right. All right. So uh, we're, Tracy is going to come up, and she has a reading this morning. It was a uh, first thing it was. It was a poem uh, written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, and then it was a song put to put to to music, and and now it's a movie. Uh, but uh, uh, it's uh, I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and repeat a peace on earth, goodwill to men. And though how as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Till ringing, singing on its winged mouth, the cannon thundered in the south. And with the sound, the carols drowned, a peace on earth, goodwill to men. It was as if an earth, the hearthstones of a continent, and made forlorn the households born, a peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair, I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, I said. I prevail. And anyway, so, oh. We think Christ that on earth there is good will to men. All right, at this, at this time we're going to ask the ushers to come forward for the morning tithes and offerings. Say the blessing. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this glorious day. Lord, we thank you for all the gifts that you are given, especially those that are laundry.
All right, the Christmas story goes something like that, I think. But uh, whatever you do, you let kids be in charge of telling it. You never know what's going to come out of the mouths of children when they
We've come to our time of praises. Does anyone have a praise they want to share? What's God been doing good? Yes, Sue. I just want to Ezra's surgery and recovery. Um, it's a, a miracle what God's given doctors the wisdom and knowledge to do and to see his x rays and how him to have a normal back and what he has done okay. for Ezra. Amen. Anybody else have a praise? Yes, Taylor. Okay. Sienna. And you remember a year later and she's here and happy and healthy. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Except for Sienna. Anybody else have? Yeah. When that cold snap first came through, I was without power for six till noon. But as soon as the power came back on, uh, part of my house didn't have it. And when I went downstairs by circuit breaker box, one of the breakers was tripped. And as soon as I flipped it, I never did see smoke. Where the smell was coming from, the smell was horrible. And uh, I couldn't find it. it. So, Let's the, the short of the story, it, yeah. it took some time, but I was praying to the Lord, thanking Him in advance. And I came across, uh, I just knew what was <laughs> And uh, what came up was, and what's going through my mind? Everybody's having kind of the same problems, right? Huge cold snap. Nobody has power. And it's Christmas holidays. Lord, you have to provide me some of And so the first time that it came up, and I followed his instructions, within a half an hour, I found the issue. And uh, I just prayed to be God because I did not know what else to do. And so the house was safe, and it didn't cost me any money. Anybody else with the praise? Yes. Our little Katie. Doing okay? He said, hi, everybody. <laughs> we want to we want to praise God for the linemen that were out in the storm. Um, we were without power from five to eleven thirty uh, on the what, what, what night was that Thursday? Friday. Thursday Friday. Um, and uh, uh, just uh, lift them up at, at prayer requests so some people are still getting power back. Yes. On that day, I want to pray the Lord for my husband. He was out twice, three times, getting us, our generac, back for communion and getting us to eat. And then we go to my sister's work the best we could. And, uh, Yes, Tracy. My hand up and cold didn't go out. Sick the last couple of days, and I know that there's several um, families dealing with sickness right now. Did you have something else, Sue? Yes. Um, on Wednesday, when I was supposed to Okay. 
Okay. Oh no, that's
Joseph talking to Mary, saying, don't be mad. I said I was sorry. I should have made reservations. Talk to me, Mary. Mary, Mary. I'm fine, says Mary. And that says how Silent Night really began. So imagine with me this scenario. It's not something that we want to happen, but it's something that definitely happens over the holidays and for anybody that's holiday. And just, I know that this is probably just not speaking to anybody here, right? You guys all have perfect marriages, right? Oh, okay. But so just for the sake of my scenario, I want to pretend that you and your spouse are fighting over something that was said and it leads you to a place where you're currently not speaking. situation. You can't ignore the problem and hope it goes away. You can't. That's just going to lead to more silence. You need to lean on the... I said this last night, and, and, and I want to say it again this morning. God had not spoken to the Israelites in about 400 years. Not a word to a prophet. Not a, not a, I'm going to give you a, a word of knowledge here or there. He hadn't sent an angel. There was no communication between God and Israel for about 400 years before. Talk about silence. There was a time of silence. So what was going on in this time? Had God turned his back on the Israelites? Was he done with them? Did, did, did his love grow cold? Did he give up on the relationship? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send to the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. You know, we've been lighting these candles each week we wrote that came down at Christmas, and it came in the package of Jesus in the manger. And so this morning I want to just spend a couple of moments focusing on the love that should be present at Christmas time. It's not something that will just come and sometimes it's hard. Some Christmases it's harder than others. But love should be in our lives at Christmas time. Before we go any further, I'm going to ask my wife if you'll open this with a word of prayer. how we view the love of God. Has God ever seemed distant, seemed distant to you? Like it seems like he's further away some days and closer other days. And, and, and sometimes it feels like he's a million miles away in another dimension like heaven. Like he's way away from this earth. He's somewhere else. And sometimes it, it, it seems like he's closer. But, but when God seems distant... This is not the relationship that he had hoped for with his people. God never wanted to live at a distance from us to look at. Just in one moment, Moses got to see the backside of God. And his face had a supernatural glow for years. That's all he could handle. And it was so it freaked people out so much they made him put a veil on his face. Because they're like, your, your face is glowing just by seeing a little bit of the backside of God. But for the, the average person, God was kept at a distance. God was not accessible by normal, everyday people. You had to go through. You take your sacrifice to the temple and you you'd go through the priest. And the priest would go before God, distance before Jesus came. And so if you wanted to get close to God, you had to go through a mediator. Through someone else to access him. And because of that, if you had to go through someone, had to come as our mediator between God and man. And he stepped into our universe. And he came as a gift to prove that God really loved us and God was accessible to us. 
That first sentence says a lot. It's not even the first sentence. It's just the first few words. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. For God so loved the world that he gave his one You know, for all of God's history up until this point, God was known for his judgment. God was known for his holiness. Some even knew God for his smiting ability. Uh, and the stories in the Old Testament. But God was otherworldly. And then it says this in Genesis 3, starting in verse 8. It says, The man and wife, Adam and Eve, heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? So this is the relationship that God wants us to have with him. Does this seem distant? God walking in the garden with you? For Adam and gave him perfect authority to watch over them. And God had given Adam everything. And now why are Adam and Eve hiding? Because they've sinned. And that has separated from God and put a barrier between man and God. So from that point until the end of the Old Testament, God was far off. God was in heaven. We were on earth. But now, through Jesus, God is coming. It means God with us. Literally, God was leaving the heavens and coming to earth so that he could be in close proximity to his people again. God really loves us. And he wants to spend time. Definition of what love is. So Jesus breaks onto the scene in a manger at Christmas and shows us how much God loves us by bringing God near to all humanity. But he doesn't. For the first time in the book of John and the first time in the New Testament chronologically speaking, the word agapeo is birthed into the world when Jesus comes on the scene. And that's a Greek word, and most of the time it's translated as love. As love. But, yeah, but this is closer than that. This is something greater than that. It's greater than the flirty and lusty love that we can have with someone that we're attracted to. You know, the, 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 the feelings that are aroused when, when, Taylor, when you first saw Kevin... It was like a house of fire, right? They're like, I just have to have him. I have to make him mine. It's greater than that first love, that attractiveness that we have when we first come into relationship with our spouses. It's, it's that you have with your brothers and sisters and your mothers and fathers as it, it's, it's good as that can be. And the best that that can be doesn't even begin to touch. This new kind of love. It's greater than our love for pizza and ice cream. But as much as I wanted that pizza, this love that God has for us is greater even than that. Greater than the love that holds a husband and wife together through the bond of marriage for all of an eternity. And it's even greater than the love that we have of ourselves. And I love me some me. Like, I love empathy and, 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 and for others. And, and it takes others and puts them above yourself. And this is a love that's so foreign to us. It can only be found in Jesus Christ. He was such a force for love that this word was used to describe him and no one else before him and no one else after him. The was on Jesus. And he came to show us how unselfish and how true God's love is for us. It's unlike anything that we have ever known. So Jesus changes the definition of man as himself. Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus' whole purpose for coming to earth was to die for your sins and for my sins 
and to give his life up for us. That's love. Romans You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, God died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone, even when we hated him to his face, even when we did the very opposite of what we were supposed to do, God sent Jesus to die for us. And in 1 John 4, 10 through 11, this is love. Not that we love God, but He loved us. And He sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for around you. But Jesus, this person is difficult to love. <laughs> Everyone is difficult to love, including you. So, but, but Jesus, this person, be, they're, they're never going to, to get anything from them. They're just taking advantage of me. Even the person, one of the people closest to Jesus, sold him out for 30 silver pieces. This agape, I don't say more, is being radical, but it, it really is radical. Jesus tells us, tells them things like, well, we'll love your neighbor. And then changes the definition of neighbor to mean basically anyone that they ever come into contact with ever. So Jesus, you're telling us to just love everyone. Jesus tells them to lay down their lives for their friends and to treat them better than they would treat their own selves. Like I said, we, we like treating ourselves. But he tells us to treat other people better than that. Jesus told us not only to love the people with this agape, unselfish love. The story of Jesus in the manger is a story about your realization of this. God really loves you. He sent his son to die for you. What are you going to do in response to this love? When we look at the person of Jesus, we need to realize this. That, and we're to accept this gift of love. And take the burden out to love one another with the same kind of love. This morning I want to close with listening to a song. I, I, I think about this topic in love last evening. Uh, if you weren't here last night, the theme last night was what can I give him? And so there were some of these cards back there. I've got some in the, in the manger here. I just want us. Are we going to give him our hearts? Are we going to give him our attention? Are we going to give him our hearts? Are we going to give him our abilities? Are we going to give him our money? Are we going to give up our selfish pride? I want you to think about that. And, and if you want to pass out some of those to the people that are here. And what we're going to do is put our names on it and circle what we need to give him in response to this love. And then just God's love us. He proved it through Jesus. Let's listen to this song, and, and if you want to bring that up even during the song, do that about God's love for us. I've got a friend closer than a brother. There is no judgment.
we were far away, God came near, sent Jesus as his gift of love to us. I just want to close with a reading this morning. Um, it's uh, called Love Came Down at Christmas. Love came down at Christmas. Love all lovely. Love divine. Love was born at Christmas. Star and angels gave the sun and gift and sign.